Okay, right, sitting on your ball. Hold my head to make it a bit taller. Okay, we're gonna sit on the ball and just take a few deep breaths in and out. In and out, and just start rotating. So we're releasing our lower back, pulling our tummy in, lifting our head up. So we've got a nice tall posture, and just rotate one way and the other way. Bring your shoulders up and back, lift your chest, take a deep breath in, hold that breath, and then release. Bringing your arms up, holding your hips still, and you'll just come to the side and to the side. That's it. Inhaling and exhaling. So you start to look up towards the ceiling as well. So we just stretch and mobilize for the first five minutes, just getting our bodies warmed up. Inhale and exhale. And I'll start to increase that slightly. And then you can put that hand on your opposite leg and then stretch and come over and just open up those sides. See if you can twist and lift away and come right over. Start to spend a little bit longer on each stretch now as well. Inhaling and exhaling, just lingering with that stretch. Nice. And focus on your breath, breathing in and out. Okay, let's open our chest. So you're gonna come down low and then come up. So we're closing and opening, closing and opening. So I'm coming right down, I'm pushing my back out and as I come up, pushing my chest up and opening myself to the world. So coming into my crunch and my ball and then open. Inhale and exhale as you feel you can and start to increase that stretch a little bit. Come right down and then come up and open. Come right down and up and open. This last couple of them, really good if you're going to be sitting at a desk. And then the last one, we put our hands just here inside our knees and we pull and we twist. And we pull and we twist. So again, just mobilizing the spine. Inhaling and exhaling. Nice, four more. Just take your time. Let your breath go with the movement. And then we're gonna bring it up to standing. You're gonna push the ball ahead of you and you're gonna sink and then you're going to bring up sort of a rounded spine and then I come down and I've got a flat spine and I'm pushing my tailbone up and away. So I'm going to lengthen out the backs of my legs. So I'm pushing down, bringing all the way down here. You can linger and then I'm going to pull my spine up, round off, push forward and sink. You can always bend your legs if you want to, if it feels more comfortable. Just put a little bend in your legs and you might find it feels a bit better. And then coming up, and you're gonna have a flat back when you come up, and then you're gonna come and sink into a squat. And then come up and you're gonna squeeze your glutes while you're doing this. So coming down, and hold, and coming up. So all the time you're doing this, you're trying to squeeze your glutes. See how my back isn't rounded? It's flat, and hold, and come up, and squeeze. Now it's really hard to squeeze your glutes when you're in this position. So you're trying to activate and squeeze, and then come down. So just a couple more, just warming up those legs. It. And then you're going to take it into a reverse lunge. So you can take the ball to the side and you can step back and we're just going to hold and then come up, step back and hold. 
Just do a few on each side, so you're just coming down. And when you're in that hold, the reverse lunge, you can have a little check. So you're trying to be 90 degrees angles and you're bringing your chest up. Coming down and hold. And have a go on the other side as well. Make sure you swap your front leg. So you've got 90 degree angles and your chest is up. Notice that once you can always come all the way to the floor and then come up all the way to the floor and then come up. Nice. Okay, so if you've got a band, um, any type of band, I'll use the yellow one just because it's easy to see the screen. But if you've got fabric bands or anything, you pop them on. So we're just going to come back to our squat, but we're going to have a bit of a glute focus to start with. So you're going to come down to that squat again, hold, and then come up, come down to that squat again, and hold. So just getting the glutes firing. If you don't have a band, it's fine. You'll still feel it in your legs. That's it. So you're pushing down and up. And then you're going to start to walk to the side and then push down. So I walk to the side nice and low and then I push oh, and I start to feel it in my glutes. The nice thing about having the ball is that means you can usually go a bit lower and you squeeze down. So you want these glutes to be firing. Squeeze down. One more. And then just take it back to your squat. So you're pushing the ball straight out in front and you're squeezing those glutes. And then as you want to, take it back into the walks. So you've got lateral movement. You can just walk and squat. And here I'm really trying to get my glutes to work as well as my legs. If you've got a band on your, you will feel this more. That's it. Three, two, one, ease up. And then we've got our glutes going again, we're in a bridge. So you sit on the ball and you're gonna walk forward, put your hands on the floor if you want to, and you raise your hips up so you can feel here. Now my legs are gonna pulse out against the band, and they're also gonna dip down into the floor and up. So I'm gonna alternate between floor up to ceiling and alternate my knees going out. So when I'm in the bridge, my knees are pushing out against the band. So have a little go at that. I would go in fours. So you're pushing out for four and then you're dipping the four. So we want to feel it in here in our glutes. So when you're up here, you're really driving those hip bones up towards the ceiling. If you feel unstable, have your feet further away from each other. Pop your hands on the floor if you want to. And if you'd rather just hold, just to get the stability, that's fine. Pull your tummy in as well. So we've got the dip. So when you're dipping, you're mobilizing your vertebrae as well. So we're helping with spinal mobility. And when you're coming out, you're working the outer parts of your glutes. So your glutes should be feeling it now. So it's there for five, four, three, two, one. Rest up. We're going to come to sitting and we're going to give your glutes a little bit of a rest. Not much. <laughs> okay, you're going to squeeze up. We're going to pulse for 10, coming straight, and then we're going to pulse for 10, coming across. Those who are quite happy, you're going to start. If you feel unstable on the ball, you come closer down, further down as if you're in a seat. You won't fall off, and you've got more support for your back. So you're just squeezing. And the biggest trick is, is to try and get your stomach to squeeze as if it's wringing out a dishcloth. So we're really making our stomach work for each movement. If you can't feel your stomach yet, you will. It's just about consistency. That's it. So you've got 10 straight and your twist is just coming up and twisting around to the side. 
and remember to breathe. Just take note of your breath, how it feels. Exhaling on the effort is always the recommended, but it doesn't always work with the pattern of your breath. Now squeeze that stomach. So we've got 10 center, we've got another 30 seconds, and you're really working on flexing the stomach. Don't worry if it's not exactly 10, 10. <laughs> and just squeeze that stomach. And then we're gonna go back to those squat walks. Five, four, three, two, one, well done. So back to those glutes. So make this your own. You come forward and you're doing your walk with your glutes and your squats. If you feel it works more for you, you walk and then you squirt. But we want that lateral movement. You want to stay nice and low in your squat. Try not to stand. We want to try and keep your legs under tension. And at the end, you can have a nice squat and pulse and try and ignite those glutes. It's quite hard to find them. And you're pulsing and squeezing. That's it. Keep your chest up so your back doesn't want to be rounded. It wants to be nice and strong. And you're coming down, then up. If you need to take a breather, you just take a breather and then you come back in. So we're going to go for another 30 seconds here. So we're really working those legs and those glutes. So you can go and pulse and go a little bit lower at the end of the movement. See if you can stay a bit lower as you move side to side. Four, work those legs. So 10, nine, eight, seven, keep your chest up. Five, four, three, two, one. Shake off those legs and then we come back into your bridge. You're just going to hold the bridge to start with. Keep your band on if you've got the band. So you start at the top of your mat and you walk through and you hold. You can have your hands on the floor if you want to. Bring your hands up, squeeze your tummy in and squeeze your glutes. Taking a deep breath in and slowly release that breath. Okay, you're just going to hold this glute bridge position. Please make sure you are putting your hands on the floor if you need to, or you put more back on the ball. If it feels too easy, you walk out, so you've got less, less body on the ball. Now drive your heels into the floor, and as you drive your heels into the floor, squeeze those hips up to the ceiling. Now I want you to pulse your glutes. So you'll drive your, hip, your heels in, and as you drive, You've just got a slight arc centric line a little bit. You're just pulsing. That's it. And then take it back to the hold. And then you've got to pulse your legs out again with that band. Keeping your hips up. It's really easy for your hips to dip now. Keep your hips up. That's it. We'll add in some movement next. So really squeeze those legs out for eight, seven, six. Hips are up. Five, four, three, two, one, and then we get to release the floor and up and then push out again with your legs. So you dip to the floor, you come up and squeeze out with your legs. Then come up. So you, when you come up, you want to come right up so your, your glutes are really working and then your legs can push out and in. With or without a band, you can still feel this. And your back might be starting to feel a bit tired now. We'll just go two more, and then we go back to our Frenchies. Then we're gonna bring it back up. If you need to ease your back off, just ease your back off there. And then we come back to our Frenchies. Exactly the same as before. You're gonna squeeze for 10 coming up. Some of you might want to go a little bit further back this time, so your elbows come over and up. 
and you start to develop the range of movement and then you'll bring it up and over. Those that want to develop the range of movement, you might want to do more of a shin tap. So you've got more movement, coming back and up. Those that are happy here, you stay there. So 10 back to the front, 10 to the side. Now, if your legs are killing with your band, take your band off, but you can still add pressure against your band as you're doing these sit-ups to still work in your glutes. Okay, those that want to go right back, you can always go right back. We will do all backs in a minute though. Just squeeze that stomach. Just another 15 seconds here. So working your core, abs like slabs, and all that. Four, three, two, one. Nice. Take your band off, but keep it handy. We will use it again. And we'll just stretch off your glutes. So you just come and sit. You might want to hold on to a ball or hold onto the wall and just ease off your glutes. That's it. Right there. Okay, we're gonna come into a little bit of a plank combo. So if you're starting, your plank is going to be on your knees and you're just going to hold it here, okay? If it's not, you can come up, go, go in between the full plank and the half plank as you want. I'm not going to hold any longer than a minute, okay? So coming up and just hold and take yourself in that position to start with. So your elbows are underneath your shoulders. You can be on your shoulders, your knees, that's absolutely fine. You can also push the ball away slightly. Okay, we're going to rotate the ball. We're going to go four one way. So it's little circles and then you hold and then you go four the other way. So we're really challenging that core. Now if this hurts your back, do smaller circles. Those who are quite happy in the plank might want to develop and do bigger circles. You're just going to continue four circles one way, hold four circles the other way. It doesn't have to be four, you can decrease it or increase it. And we're just trying to get the centre core really working and activating, come down to your knees if you need to at any point. That's a minute, three, two, one. Release off. Okay, we're gonna come into that again. I'm gonna give you a stretch first. Push the ball away and you sink. From here, you squeeze up. There is a bit like an extended cat curve. We'll just give our stomach a bit of a rest and then we'll come back into our plank. Okay, bring those shoulders up and back and we'll go back into our plank. Three, two, one. Coming up, same again. So hold it and then when you're ready, you do a few circles and then you hold and then a few circles the other way. So just by doing this, I'm making my stomach work actively as it's holding in the plank. That's there, right? See if you can hold it there. That's there. So just get your tailbone to point down towards your heels. Try and open your chest up so it's not crunched in. Pull that tummy in. Hold it there, number 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release off and let yourself stretch out again. And we'll do one more step like that. Just a little stretch. Natural stop watch might be easier. Okay, and then another minute into our plank. Are we ready? Three, two, one. So either your hat plank or you curl your toes under. You can always have a go at having one leg 
and the leg come up ever so slightly and then down. If it hurts your back and you're in the plank, raise your hips slightly. But if you find yourself up here, it means that you need to be down on your knees. Those who are in the plank, watch yourself on the screen and just try and get your hips to be in line with your shoulders, your hips and your ankles. Your hips might need to raise slightly to have more activation in your core. Put in the rolls if you like to. If you're on your knees, try and let your shoulders, your hips and your knees to be in line. It's very easy to end up to be like this. Just try and activate that core. Just holding it for the last five, four, three, two, one, brilliant. And then push away and come up. Push away. Okay, that was very much anyway. Okay, we get to lie on the floor now. <laughs> and come back to the stomach. Okay, so we lie on the floor. The ball's gonna go on our shins, our knees above our hips, and we're just gonna lie here where you can feel your stomach activate and work. Just take a few deep breaths, trying to lengthen your spine, wiggle yourself so your spine is lengthened, and try and make contact with the whole of your spine on the floor. Just take note of how your spine is feeling. Pull that tummy in, and your tailbone is going to be lifted ever so slightly off the floor. It might be you need to bring your knees in a little bit more. I want you to feel your stomach working. Bring your hands up, fingertips facing up towards the ceiling. Engage to bring your shoulders off the floor and then, then bring them up and back. Just got a nice long spine. Hold it there, close your eyes, take a deep breath in. And out. Just let yourself strengthen by holding yourself still. Those who feel quite happy to are going to take the ball out slightly. And those who are quite happy here, you're going to stay there. I just want your stomach to be working. If you find it better with your hands on the floor, then put your hands on the floor. And just take a few moments for your mind and your body. Feel your core strengthening, lift that tailbone up. And then we'll put in some movement. So you take the ball into your hands and then you extend back to your tabletop position or slightly further out. We're going to go super slow. So we're trying to activate the muscles the whole time and we're really aware of how our body is working. It might be that you're here and that is enough, that is fine. Go within whatever it feels right for you. Some of you might think, oh, I can keep going. And you might extend all the way out. But if you're here, make sure that tailbone is trying to come off the floor and your lower back is not off the floor. So coming in and drive that lower back into the floor. Feeling that core strengthen. Nice. Inhaling and exhaling. And then bringing the ball into your hands and you're just going to hold again that tabletop position with the ball in your hands this time. Lifting your tailbone off the floor if you can. And then you're going to extend your foot down for that toe tap and up. But it's a really controlled movement. So I'm having to really pull my tailbone off the floor so I can feel my stomach work. And keeping that 90 degree bend, take that ball back further if you want to. And then those that want to go a little bit further, you will extend that leg out. Hold for a few seconds and then come in. Take that leg out and hold for a few seconds and then come in. If you need to go back to your toe taps, do so, but we're going really, really super slow. So it's all about the strength and the power of our body. Just the last 10 seconds here. Focus on your breath. Pull in that stomach. Make sure that lower back is not coming off the floor. Three, two, one, just wiggle those legs. 
the bowl is coming back and you're going to squeeze. Now, those that want to be here for her flexion, you can put your hand behind your head and you can rock up five one side, five the other side. Those are quite happy. You're going to come up and you're going to go for a crunch, but again, it's going to be super slow. You're going to control it on the way down and control it on the way up. That's it. So it's full of control. As you come up, try not to let your ball come too far ahead of you. So you're using your stomach. That's it. And then start to add in a little bit more power. So you can go a little bit quicker. That's it, those down here. Then go a little bit quicker. So you can do 10 one side, 10 the other side. That's it. Squeeze. That's eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then a third movement is turn on our backs for a dolphin pose. So for this one here, start with your feet, your hands on the floor. Bring those hips up. You bring your hands off if you are ready. You don't have to do that. Or you have them down here. Now you can be here holding your hips up and you're feeling it strength in your back. Take your hands to your hips and push up slightly. Taking a deep breath in and out. Now, when you first do this, you will feel wobbly on the ball. So keep both hands there and you can always just bring your hands up and then you slowly come up. Those who are up, close your eyes and focus on a few breaths. Have a go at three deep breaths, and then you're going to roll back down, let your vertebrae come down and soften on the ground, and then roll up from your tailbone all the way up, so as much of your back is off the floor. Hold there for three or four breaths, or a count of eight, and then you'll roll down. So make the breaths and the timing work for you. You might find that you want to hold up for longer, and just exploring that movement. Those that want to take it a bit further, you might want to go up with one leg and then coming down. So those that want to do one leg, fill your boots. <laughs> so just make sure you're equal on each side. So we're just another 10 seconds left in this movement for the dolphin pose, squeezing those hips up, trying to have your body as a long line like a plank. So four, three, two, one, coming down, rest off. Okay, I'm going to bring the ball up to here. So dead bugs are the last movement on the floor before we come off the floor for a bit. So you extend one leg, opposite arm, opposite leg. You can soften this movement and you can take it to a toe tap instead. That's it. Again, trying to pull that tailbone up and engage. You can always bring your head and your shoulders off the floor as well if you want to deepen the movement challenging those muscles. Feeling your body work, it's quite easy just to let the dead bug happen. You need to actively work those muscles. You can lengthen. That's it. So 10, nine, we're gonna get to single legs after this. Eight, seven, I'm gonna give you a little challenge for single legs as well. Five, four, three, two, one, ease up. So just bring yourself into a torso twist. And then as you're ready, you'll come up to sitting. Give yourself a minute. And then you'll come up to standing. Now for this one, you might want to have a chair handy. Um, 
to hold on to, or not, or a wall. Okay, those who are happy with single legs, you can crack on and put yourself in the position and go 10 lunges on each side. Now, single legs. You have one leg on the floor, one back leg on the, on the back, and you're just pushing that ball back, and then you bend the front leg into the lunge. So you have weight on this leg. You're either going to hold for 10 on the leg, you can come up, so you could go 10 lunges or 10 hold. Those who are used to this movement coming down and have a go at 10 taps, down and up. And we're just going to rotate from 10 to 10 on each side. So when you're coming down, you're making sure our knee isn't in front of that toe. And we're feeling it in this thigh, we're keeping our chest up and we're just feeling the strengthening of that single leg. Now, my little challenge to you, not everyone might want to do this challenge, is you're holding forward, it's a bit yoga like I suppose, and you're going to pull and open, pull and open, then you can explore and come down and around. So you can go into that lunge a little bit more and open. Oh, it's not as good as one I didn't. <laughs> That's it. And you just explore that movement. So what we're doing is putting in that twist of the spine and you can try it on both sides. Have that chair handy in case you need it. you're coming down and you're opening. Now, those who are beginners don't really need to do this, but of course you can, because you can always hold on to a chair. It's a great thing about being able to do it in your own space, you can find, get all the help that you need. Just squeeze that leg. That's it, lovely. And then we're going to move it into um, a front support position. Um, right, beginners, you're going to put your tummy on the ball here, and you're just going to come here. Okay? Now, we are going to be flicking our legs up and down to squeeze our glutes. Those that want to, you can always come slightly further out if you want to. So here, I want you to do little circles with your legs as if you're swimming. So doing little circles, I'm doing my circles going inwards and then have a go at your circles going outwards. And then you're going to hold, point your toes and then you're going to flutter your legs. Squeezing those glutes. And then you're going to hold, and then you're going to go in and out. You can flex your feet, you can point your feet. Keeping my, um, I'm trying to push my hips uh, into the ball so I can feel it in my glutes. And then rest off. And we'll do that again. So we come up. So we go circles. So my toes are painting uh, circles, my toes circles are coming inwards. I'm trying to push my hips into the ball to lift my heels up and then go the other way. If it is hurting your back, take your feet lower. If you want to make it harder, bring your feet up further up. And then take it to pulsing in. And then take it to your flutter kick, coming up and down. And then we're going to go into tucks. Anyone where this is too much weight in your hands, you can just practice putting weight on your hands here, walking forward and walking back. 
Those who are happy to go a little bit further, we're going to walk forward. You're going to come into a tap and then you're going to come out and you're going to engage. Those who want to make it a bit harder, have less leg on the ball. In for your tuck and out and engage. So we're really focusing on that engagement of the core coming up and out. Well done. Another couple. That's it. And then we'll walk it back and take it back to our circles. Really squeezing those legs up. You could do this with bands around your legs as well. Have a go at your kicking in. Squeezing those hips into the ball and then have a go at your flutters. That's it. Now just have a go at squeezing up and slowly releasing. Squeezing up as much as you can and slowly releasing. That's it. And then when you're ready, you'll walk back out just to your hold and your tuck or further out and your tuck. That's it. Now you want to mix it up with your tuck, bring in your toe taps or bring in your mountain climber. So those are the taps, you want to make it a bit harder, come in with your hold and then your tuck. Keeping your weight over your wrists. And then take it back <laughs> as I fall off my ball <laughs> and come up and just sit on your ball. Nice. Just ease off your wrists. That's it. Well done. So we're kind of come back and sit in the ball a bit like we did before. And we're going to do one more lot of glutes. So if you've got your band, like your band on, so same as before, we're going to walk out and we're going to just hold to start with. And then we're going to have a go at lifting one leg up and pulsing this leg up and then holding the other leg up and pulsing. Those that are beginners, you could just put your heel up and you pulse and then you heel up and then you pulse. So have a go at some single leg pulses. You could just have your heel up and you're pulsing up to so say five pulses one leg and then five pulses the other leg. So, and then we're going to alternate them with pushing our knees out again like we did before. So pushing your knees out. So I would probably go five pulse one leg, five pulse the other leg, and then five squeezing out to get those glutes. And if you want to, you could also lift up and you can have some more power coming up on that single leg. You can put your hands on the floor so you've got a bit more stability. It might be the band isn't aiding you. If it's not aiding you, just get rid of it. I'm just squeezing out. That's it. Just a few more seconds there and then we'll go for another hold. So make sure you're even on your legs. Even yourself out and then come up and hold in that Good bridge and just soften your mind, soften your body, pull your tummy in, squeeze your glutes, and now I want you to just pulse gently out with your legs against the band. When it gets too much, you're just going to stop and rest, and then you'll go back in. So we're taking the glutes to that feeling of fatigue, and then we'll soften. And we'll come back in. Just gonna go for another 10, 9, 
eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Coming up. Okay, if you have got a light weight or two cans, grab them for this one for a pull. So we're going to do a windmill. You can get rid of the band if you want to. So with the windmill, um, you can take yourself further down the bowl to help you. The can or the weight comes to the floor and then you're taking it back. Those who want to, take it all the way back and you're going forward and back. So you've got full flexion of your stomach. If you have got a light weight, it's quite nice to put it in for this one, but it doesn't want to feel too much on your back. And then have a go on the other side as well. So you're tapping down, so your stomach is relaxed, coming back, so coming down. No, some of you might want to do this one more, a more dynamic dynamo effect, coming back and up. I would go five each side. Coming just the weight above your head is enough if you're beginning, those who are quite happy to extend, take it back, really squeeze. Keep switching your hands. Okay, try and add a bit more power and strength into the movement. So you're actively engaging your stomach, going backwards and forwards. And then we're going to bring in a twist. So it's going to come up and over to your opposite shin without whacking yourself in the shin. So you just come over and you've got a bit of a twist through your obliques. So we're trying to go in a diagonal. It's not too much of a diagonal. And then you come to the other side as well. Coming down. And up. Then find the each hand, hand, side, that's it. Really engage your stomach. Find those muscles. Don't let it hurt your back. See if you can add in a little bit more power. We're nearly done. So even yourself up. Make sure you've done the same on each side. And we'll take it to roll backs. Again, you can use hands or you can use weights. Your hands are out in front. Um, my I'm sitting into the bowl and I'm peeling my back onto the bowl and then hold and then peeling up. So this one here, similar, but there's less power. It's more about the control. I could take the cans behind my head and I need to use the other part of my stomach to come up. So I'm rolling back vertebrae by vertebrae, really slowly and controlled, coming back and then using my stomach to pull me up. You can add in one weight or two weights here as well. So you're coming down, taking it back, squeeze up. That's it. So we're going to go to wall squats after this. Really squeeze that stomach. You might find it can for too much. And then release your hand. You can use actually a weight for this one. And we're going to finish off with a 10 crunch and then 10 to the side. So 10 forward, 10 to the side. You can add in weights if you want to add in a bit of resistance. And you can always add in a box if you want to add in a bit more for your crunch. So squeeze your stomach here. But last minute here, and then we'll go into wall squats. And just give our legs a little bit of love. And squeeze. So you don't need to be using the weights. You can just be here. But I want you to feel your abs all the way from your pelvic bones up to your ribs. And you have to really concentrate on them. And squeeze. Brilliant. You can go a little bit further back if you want to make it harder. 
but you've got to really focus on that power. Make sure your stomach is working. That's it, keep going there. 10, nine, eight, very slow seconds. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, well done. We're gonna take the ball to a wall. If you don't have a wall, then you can do a standing squat instead. I've got a bit of a concave wall. So you come against the wall and you're going into a wall sit. Bring your hands up if you want to. If you want to add a little weight, you can here as well. And you're just gonna dip down. That's it. So in this wall squat, you pull your tummy in, push your hips back. Brilliant. Now, I'm in my mat. I always have my hands on my legs in the wall sit. Try and release your hands either to your chest or bring them up or put them back on the ball. And now you're going to pulse. And then you're going to hold. And now you're going to do little circles with the ball. You fall one way and fall the other way. Anyone with bad knees, if this hurts, you just go down and up ever so slightly. So with the circle rotations, you can play around with the movement. And I'm staying low, I'm not coming up to standing. I'll go fall one way, fall the other way, just like the planks. And you hold, fall one way, fall the other way, and you hold. And then come back to your centre and hold. Now, you're going to bring your feet into the centre, bring one toe up and have a go at one legged. If you can, I'm going to hold on to the wall here, you bring one leg up and you pulse on one leg. So, so we're trying to get some unilateral work as well. So. And then your last movement, we come into a wide squat. So we come into a sink, we pull our tummies in, our toes are out, and we're going to pulse here. Bring your hands in front and your head on the ball up to you and squeeze for 10, 9, 8, stay low, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, come up. Ooh. And knees off. Nice. Okay, have we got time for a side plank? Yes. Very quick side plank. Last one. <laughs> Grab a cushion. Pop your knee on the floor. Come up. So you can be here or you can be lengthened. Up to you. And we're just going to hold it for 45 seconds on each side. If you want to pop in a rotation. This is your next step up, coming up. That's it. So holding it there, just 20 seconds. Nice and strong. Dry those hips up. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Change sides and then stretch. So level one, your knees on the floor, hand up or you can support as well. Level two, you're lengthening, coming up. Reaching up with those hips, taking your rotation if you want to, feeling nice and strong. Hold it there. Remember to breathe. Ten, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Really soft. Grab yourself a band. Grab yourself a band. Come to lie on the floor. And then we get to stretch. So, going to focus on your hamstring stretch to start with. Lengthen the back of your leg. Take a deep breath in. As you exhale, you can increase that stretch. That's it. 
And then you just switch side to side. That's it, feeling the back of your leg. Extend. And we'll pair this with a glute stretch. So you fold your foot over your leg and you use the ball to pull in. And you can push your knee away as well. So you just go between those stretches of your hamstrings and your glutes. So you're pulling that ball in with the heel and you're feeling the stretch there. From there, take the ball into your hands and then you can also take it one way and the other way, so you've got a spinal twist and you can use the ball as an added weight just to help your stretch. So you're coming up and over. So my knee comes over to feel the lengthening. Taking a deep breath in. And then bring yourself into a tuck and just rock out. Leaving the ball to one side, I'm going to come into a pigeon. So you come into your front support, into your front support, sweep through, take that leg back into your sitting, and then onto your elbows, and then let your body just sink and melt into the floor. You can lie down, you can switch your legs whenever you feel you need to. It's just your time. Inhaling, exhaling into that stretch. Switch your legs if you haven't. There. And just feel this move. Go for the stretch. That's it. And then we'll softly take it into a child's pose. Roll your knees out. You're going to walk forward, stretch, and you're just going to see. And let yourself lie and breathe. As you exhale, deepen into that stretch. Soften your chest down towards the floor. Reach those hands away from your body. Drive your hips back and down into the floor. Take your arms to the side and take this arm up and over so you can find the other side stretch. And then you walk into the other side and take it up and over to feel a side stretch. And we're going to lengthen down back onto the mat. So you're lying down, bring your leg up for your quads, pop your hand on your head, and just softly stretch that quad to the front of your leg. My hip is driving into the floor. I'm gently pulling that leg up, pushing my knee away from my body. And just gently switch your legs around. So driving that hip in. Inhaling and exhaling, softening and slowly releasing your breath. From here, we're going to do a scorpion stretch. So your arms are out like a T on the floor. My leg closest to you is coming up and over, and I can bring this foot in to foot hand <laughs> towards my body. I can open this knee up and over. So the leg comes up and over into the opening of your back. If you want to feel it more in your back, your, your hands stay on the floor and your legs go over. If you want to feel this as a shoulder stretch as well, you just sweep this hand up towards your body so you can feel it in your shoulder too, just to make this stretch work for you. And then bring it up or into your cat cow. So focus on some breaths, inhaling and exhaling. 
So those that want to stay and do guided relaxation, if you get yourself a blanket or a mat, mat, <laughs> I've got a mat, blanket, <laughs> and then just lie down. Those who are not staying for guided relaxation, you can just take yourself off. And then those who guided relaxation, just come and lie down on the floor and just focus on your breath. Well done, everybody. Okay. So lie down on the floor and just focus on your breath. Take some deep breaths in and out. Just let your body slowly start to soften and gently relax. That's it. Allow the muscles in your face to release around your eyes, around your jaw. Let your back start to melt into the floor from the top of your spine all the way down your lower back. For your vertebrae release one by one. Soften your lower back into the floor. Scan your back for any tension and let your breath linger and release. Traveling back up your back to your shoulder blades and feel the tension just under your shoulder blades, just release and relax into the floor. Your shoulders, again, just to release and melt. And let your arms feel nice and heavy, palms facing up. And let the energy just flow through your body with your breath. Travel back down your back to your lower back, your pelvic area, your hips, and just release those muscles. Letting your breath linger. Inhaling relaxation. Let your breath travel through your legs and progressively relax your left leg from the top of your leg, your thighs, your quads, your calves, all the way down to your toes. And the same again for your right leg. Release your thighs, your quads. Your hamstrings, your calves, all the way down to your toes. So focus on taking a deep breath in and as you exhale, imagine that breath is like a wave going from the top of your crown, of your head, all the way through your body, releasing any tension. Nice, softening. Relaxing. Taking time with your breath. Take note of how your mind is feeling. Think of something you need to do for yourself that's positive and nurturing. Let any tension just ease away. Take note of your body, how your body is feeling, and allow it to release. Make sure your mouth is released, your eyes, your cheeks, your hands your hips, your legs, your shoulders, 
taking a deep breath in. Imagine like candle is in front of your mouth and it's flickering and dancing when you exhale. As it soaks up any tension, any stress. Inhale, give more. Exhale, any stress, any tension, leftover emotions. And let your body just progressively relax. Slowly bring yourself into the tuck. And then rock yourself side to side and then bring yourself into a cat cab. Squeezing up. And down and slowly bring yourself up into forward fold. Let yourself hang just the length and off those legs. And then very slowly coming up to stand. Having your head the last thing to rise. And coming up easy in those shoulders. Taking deep breath in and out. One more breath. And now, well done. And just release. Just add in any other stretches that you need to.